I'll uh, call the meeting to order. Um, welcome everyone to the weekly meeting for the Rotary Club of Wausau. This is getting to be old hat looking at all of you smiling faces on my uh, on my iPad here. So um, I'm looking, I, I'm scrolling through. I, I, I'm wondering if we have any guests. I don't believe so. There you go. That's good. I remember. And I don't think we've got any guests. Um, just jump in if we do. How about happy or sad dollars? I talked about trying to assign this uh, task last week. I kind of took it last week. I didn't get I didn't get to anybody to warn them of this, but does anybody want to take over uh, calling for happy or sad dollars? Brad, you've been pretty, you know, it's been a while for you. You want to lead us through happy and sad dollars? How's that sound? <laughs> you're oh, muted. Now you're on mute. Now you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good afternoon, Rotarians. To them anyways. Um, can we start out? Does anybody have any happy dollars today? <laughs> I, I will. This is Gaylene. Um, maybe I'll show my video now, too. Um, my daughter had a tournament for softball over the weekend, and uh, they won. So it was an 18 tournament. And so that's my happy dollar, maybe a sad dollar added in. Um, we went camping as part of that, and the truck broke down on the way home. So, oh, no. <laughs> but fortunately, um, you know, um, blessings as they are and, and God looking over us. Uh, we were five miles away from my in-laws. And so my father-in-law came to the rescue and was able to hook up his truck and pull our camper back home. And our our truck is now sitting at the Honda dealership in uh, Appleton being fixed. So, so. But the good news is uh, my daughters uh, won their tournament. So Wausau was very well represented over the weekend. 10U softball. That's good. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gaylene. Any other happy dollars today? Uh, yes, this is Jean. Um, hello, everybody. I, I don't have a camera in my... my uh, uh, computer, so uh, we're going blank here, but I want to put in a happy $10. Bill had an exceptional oncology visit this morning, and everything is looking just great. So, Praise happy God. $10. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Hey, Thank you. That's Thank outstanding. You. Outstanding. We're Will so do. happy for your whole family. Congratulations. Give them our best. Thank you. Thank you. You, you bet. Oh, well, that's, that's going to be tough to beat right there because that's the happiest to happen. <laughs> uh, anybody want to give it a shot? Oh, I don't know if I'm, I can beat it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't mean to cut in there. I just was like happy dollar real quick. Baseball started. Not really meant to beat anybody or, be, you know what I'm saying, but just <laughs> baseball, MLB's back online. Happy dollar. Hey, okay, thanks, Andrew. All right. Any other happy dollars? Well, how about sad dollars? Any sad dollars? This is Rosemary. I have a sad dollar. Thanks to the seven inches of rain that we got here around my lake in Lang Lake County, my dock is actually underwater two inches. <laughs> oh, and no. The roads up here north of Antigo, so many of them are flooded over. So if you're planning on going up north, you better make sure that the roads aren't blocked because people have had to turn around and go all the way back to Merrill and then come in to the cottages up here via Highway 45 as opposed to heading north any other way. Hopefully with it being dry this this week, um, the water level will go down some more, but uh, it's unbelievable. Mm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Any other sad dollars? Yeah. All right. Then, uh, since we don't have a drawing, I'll turn it back over to you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Peck. Um, okay. Any announcements uh, for the week? I don't have any specific I, I, announcements. I do. Um, Someone this, does. I yep. can't tell who's. It's Gaylene. Gaylene. Okay. Yep. So, um, Tanya, if you want to pipe in any time, please. Um, I don't see Sean Wright in on the conversation. Um, but we did have a uh, 
a go-to meeting between Sean and uh, Tanya and I regarding the rain, uh, reindeer run. Uh, obviously, we're still working out the details and we'll um, kind of continue to move forward. Uh, one, from my notes, from, excuse me, while I grab my notes. So um, what we're planning on doing is offering up the virtual uh, race. And so that's obviously a trend that's happening. And um, kind of being at the mercy of what's going on with the COVID, um, we decided at this point in time, we're still gonna have it in person, but instead of having all our money invested into the timing and, and with the risk that if something happens and we can't get out, uh, what we would do is have a more a true fun run. So if anybody's familiar with the Bull Falls run and how there really isn't uh, a timekeeping, I mean, they do have a running clock, but we're not going to have um, it set up in such a way that it would be um, uh, um, having people individual time keep. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but it would certainly, uh, one, um, in case we had to make any last minute changes, it would allow us to have that flexibility. Um, a lot of the races now being held that are being held in person, they have to do wave starts because they have to limit the number of people in the race. So we just kind of felt like this might be a better approach to it. And that would still allow us to have the ability to have that in person. Um, Tanya, I don't know if you wanted to add anything else that we talked about on that. That was probably the biggest thing other than um, on the sponsorship side of things. I don't know if we were going to cover that portion of it or if we made any headway on it, but um, we were still looking for sponsors and that's um, obviously we have to nail some of this down and have the right, you know, like adjust our messaging uh, when we seek some sponsorship. So. so we did lose one of our biggest um, advocates and participation as far as people who contribute to the uh, sponsorship, Mike Beck. So um, to find Mike's replacement, I am relying on Art and Andrew to help out. And if anybody else is willing to help team up with the sponsorship, that'd be great. Um, any participants or volunteers, that'd be awesome. Um, we're just throwing around ideas. Um, I had sent off an idea I hadn't heard back um, yet from Sean or Tanya. Um, I know that my associ uh, association <clears throat> had to cancel their conference, and so what they're doing is having featured emails on different sponsors <coughs> to the participants. So, excuse me. Well, I, I just interrupt and say that I think it's very important for Santa Claus this uh, next year to uh, <laughs> to wear a mask. Uh, the whole 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 uh, is a lot of expelling of air from the lungs um, that we should be careful of with uh, this COVID-19 arc. Are you, uh, you know, a white one? Can he, hopefully he can talk, to, he can communicate to Santa about that proposal. <laughs> I, I think maybe Santa will do less ho 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 and you may be a little, trying to do a little more dancing with the runners. <laughs> <laughs> We did think it was important to have that in person, even if we're not timing. Um, I think runners are, are, you know, we don't mind doing the, the virtual, but I think there's still going to be a good turnout if we do have an in-person race. I still think that there's going to be absolute interest in having something. So many races have been canceled. So um, getting everybody together. And we would still do some sort of um, award ceremony especially and maybe uh, focus more on the, in the spirit of the race. So the dressing up and doing something to um, win that way versus being the first one across the finish line. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. Um, we'll be working out um, the details on the volunteers and what we need. Um, oh, the other big thing too, is if with, with the uh, race being a fun race, uh, uh, something we're seeing, uh, Sean has seen, um, some of the in-person races, I, I also saw it as well when we were looking over the weekend for races for my husband, is a lot of the races are canceling um, the water stops too, um, just because of um, COVID. So that will be probably something we will do as well. We wouldn't necessarily have a water stop 
and that would also help out on the volunteer side of things as well. So if anybody has any questions, please let um, either Tanya or myself know or Sean. Um, so, or if you have any questions now, let me know. Hi, it's Rosemary. One idea that John Townsend and I had last year when we were standing during the race on the course was to see if we can gather enough boom boxes to be playing music along the whole course instead of people like me singing or running, having my hat do the singing. I, I think it would um, just make things more fun. So if people have old boom boxes that they can put a, C a Christmas CD in or something of that sort, I, I just think it a fun idea. Um, would be fun. That's all. That's a great idea. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Other ideas or questions for Gaylene or Tanya? The only, the only thing I was going to add is we're going to try to reuse. Um, we have a lot of leftovers. Sean was going to do inventory of some of the um, giveaways. Um, we, the other idea we were thinking about, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're also thinking with the virtual run, um, somehow it would be a package from Santa. So for those, you know, because a lot of the races, like I did one that was actually scheduled in Northern Georgia and um, I got a package in the mail with my t-shirt and et cetera. But if there's a way that we could package the people who participate in the virtual run being a uh, package from Santa. So that was the thought and idea. Okay. Like maybe email from Rudolph, Wisconsin or something like that, just to add a little fun. Great idea. <laughs> Um, the, an email just came from Sean a few minutes ago. We have about a hundred gloves and hats left, so we probably won't have a cost for more giveaways this year. So um, if, the, if we can get even half the people participating this year versus last year, we should it should be a decent fundraiser. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else on that topic? All right, any other announcements? <clears throat> Deb, looks yeah, like I'm you're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give Dennis, yeah. Dennis first. I'm gonna give okay. an update for, for the uh, hunger class because uh, we have our Patrick, he's, he's unable to attend today. Um, so over the week, Patrick uh, received the pledge of about $225. Um, there hasn't been any movement on our Facebook or the Harness app, so we're still at 345 on Facebook, uh, 35 on the Harness. So in total, as of today, we've hit 605, which means that we've met the uh, uh, match of the first 500. So with the match of the 500, we've raised a total of $1,105 for Hunger Plus. Nice. Um, the plan for the Hunger Plus, I believe we are still running the uh, um, campaign till Wednesday. Um, we will decide on Wednesday to see if we should keep it open or we would close it. Uh, we'll let everybody know. But meanwhile, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to uh, Patrick. Okay, thanks, Dennis. So we've got a couple days left to contribute to Hunger Plus for this, this go around. There are a few different ways to do that. Um, if you haven't had a chance yet, uh, it'd be great if we could uh, we could do that before we close it down for this quarter. So thanks, Dennis, for all your efforts. And thanks to uh, Patrick as well, who wasn't able to make it today. Um, Deb, I think you've got yeah. an announcement as well. Okay. Just real quickly, uh, everyone should have received an email, a second email for me this morning, because I didn't want them to get lost, the topics to get lost. Um, but I sent the, the link to the Google Doc again uh, for signing up for speakers. Uh, Sergeant and all of that stuff. I sent that out again. We have two openings for August uh, that need to be filled. If you could check your schedules and see if you can help us line up some speakers. I'm sure Andrew, Andrew just uh, messaged me. He had to step away from the call for, or from our meeting for a minute. But um, I'm sure he and uh, Lori Prochnow and, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate if you could help us fill out the schedule. If not, we will resort to the old version of just assigning people alphabetically to take in these open spots. And I'd rather not do that if we don't have to. Okay. 
All right, so take a look at that sign-up sheet and um, try to try to help us out with speakers and, and the other roles if you can. Um, anything else Any in terms of announcements? <clears throat> It's a little hard. I got to scroll through my iPad to just read people's faces. So I'm going to assume that means no. Andrew had to step away. Is that right? Just for a minute. So I'll maybe uh, we're at a point where we can introduce the speaker. I think Andrew is going to. I see Corlene is here. Welcome, Corlene. Good to see you again virtually. Um, are you all set to tell us all about that fancy new building that's about to open up or is opening up on the on the riverfront? I am. All right. Am. The floor is All yours. Right. Okay. So there we go. I guess uh, this is the first time I've done this. So um, I thought what I'd do is just start off with um, there it is here. All righty, hold on just a second here. Yeah, we'll do this. All right, so this is our website, Wasa River Life, and this is probably old news for the, the majority of everybody that's here, but you all know that this is the second time around, right? Um, the first time around, the initial developer had 56 Probably. apartments. Yeah. We have, uh, this is Ark, we have your spreadsheet up there. Oh. Um, your screen sharing is paused. Okay. New share. Got it. Can you see that? Nope. Oh, dear. Um, resume share? Ah, okay. Now what do you see? Still the, still the spreadsheet. Now what do you see? Oh, screen sharing is stopped as the shared window is closed. Oh, great. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not very good at this. All right, let's try this one. If, if we go back in the office, I'd run over to your office and help. <laughs> right? Right. So do you, do you see it now? Now we're better. Yes. Yeah. Okay, That's perfect. So this is our website. Okay. Yep. So this is our website. Um, so we were at 56 units initially. We're now at 75. The current developer added on a layer, you know, fourth floor. So this sort of gave us a little bit of a challenge with regards to the parking. Um, our garage is still 56, 56 um, parking spaces big with 75 apartments. So we had to restructure the rental a little bit, bring it down $40 a month so that we can rent out one one parking space per apartment on a first come first serve basis and i'd say we have about of the 33 that we have rented i would say a, maybe four or eight of them haven't taken the space um the layouts are relatively the same as what they were before, um, with the exception of we added something very cool on the, the second, third, and fourth floor. And these are a three bedroom, three bath, and they they rent for twenty eight hundred a month, um, but they're almost nineteen hundred square feet. You walk in here, you have your vestibule, um, coat closet. This is all cabinets, uppers and lowers and counters with a very large oversized um, island, huge living room. And this over here, and I have pictures of this I can share with you also. Um, this over here is a wine bar with a small under counter refrigerator and a sink. So it just really makes this whole living area so awesome and huge. The decks, um, generally the patios are six by 10. This one is six by I think 13, a little bit larger. 
And so we have a bedroom over here on the left with its own private bathroom and a closet. And sitting in this little chair right here, because you can see my arrows, right? Yes. Okay. So if you sit in this chair, you're looking out this window, you've got a stunning view of looking up the river. It's just amazing. Um, and when you walk in back into the living room, if you walk down this hallway, the second bedroom is here. Their bathroom is here, which is shared to the common area, you know, for your guests. This is a, another stunning room. It's huge. Um, I personally love for this to be my office. <laughs> Um, as you walk down, this is so down the way and private for the master bedroom and the bathroom and a very large closet. The majority of the apartments all have quite large closets. There's a few where it just didn't work out, but um, right in here, these are the only three apartments that have an actual gas fired furnace due to the size of the unit. And so because everybody else is all electric with a, an electric um, PTAC unit that is get, um, forced heating and forced air, um, their gas is included in their rent because it's part of the house gas meter. So that's a little bit sort of offsets the, the rent, I guess. But we have all three of these leased and I have a waiting list. Isn't that amazing? That that Coralie, that it that's been amazing to me. I've talked to uh, some folks about about the project and twenty eight hundred bucks a month. There there are a lot of homes you could buy in Wausau mm -hmm. for that, and and yet there the demand is there for uh, for people who don't want the maintenance and upkeep of of owning a home. You feel good about and the developers feel good about the the demographics and and. Uh, you know that that people there's a desire for for these uh, these kinds of units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Even this is our next largest home, the Arbor Vita. It's a three bedroom, two bath, um, and I think sort of what we found out after we built this, and um, and I don't know if you all know this, but Bob Odie, one of the three developers, has um, negotiated and, and worked out um, a, a deal, I guess, with um, City of Schofield. And he's building a project just like this, yet it's bigger and better, I should say. So there's going to be more parking than the number of apartments. And there's going to be um, the exterior common areas are going to be tweaked a little bit. Um, the area of the site that it's going to be on is down um, the old, originally it was a Schofield Mill down there on Drop Street. Hmm on the flowage and by the dam. And so, you know, I think what we're finding is we're getting feedback from folks that are renting these apartments and it's sort of helping him tweak the apartments that we're gonna be building down in Schofield later. Um, uh, and Corlean, this one, Corlean, yeah. Uh, is that mm -hmm. on the east side of the flowage? Or southeast that side? It's on the south, southwest. It's right behind, um, Marcel's insurance. Oh, yep. So that would be south and yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Near where the canoe landings were, or the kayak landings were. Right. Yep. So in this one, this Arborvita has a stunning entryway right here. It's just huge. Plenty large enough to put a piece of furniture, you know, for welcoming your guests, washer and dryer. These kitchens and even the one bedrooms, they're huge and there's so much storage. It's just really the beautiful. And you'll see in some of the pictures later, um, we were able to talk the developer into putting a backsplash um, between you know the uppers and the lowers. And it's uh, the white, what do they call it? Mop board. It's real, white tile, it's really, really pretty. Um, so when you walk over here to the right, um, you'll have guest bedroom one, guest bedroom two, shared bathroom. Then on the other side is your master, the closet, and the, um, the bathroom. This right here, this is a one bedroom, one and a half bath. 
one of my personal favorites of the complex. Um, if you don't need that second bedroom, this one is just amazing. I don't know if you can sort of tell this living room is a good three feet wider than the living room in what we just looked at at the Arbor Vita. Really nice and spacious, tons of cabinets again. Here's your half bath right here. And the single bed bedroom is here, walks through the closet and into the private bathroom. And again, here, you, when you walk in, you have a nice big area here for a entryway. Those are high demand. We, um, there's only, I'll show you the layout again on the sort of small, but this right here, this is the, and it's called the Lone Rock. These, all four of these Lone Rocks have been rented immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and a couple over here have been, been leased out. Right here. Um, so what happens if I'm going to go grab an Excel spreadsheet here? Can you guys see this or no? You can't see an Excel spreadsheet, can you? No. Just a matter. Well, we were we were seeing it before, Coraline, so I think it's doable. But yeah, I think uh, so too. So I'm going to go back to it. Got it. Um, new share. There. Now you can see it. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's make this a little bit smaller. I thought this was interesting. Uh, make it a little bit smaller. So as you can see, it's the St. Germain, right? 1,840 square feet, $2,800 a month. Total three, rented three. So the Arbor Vita, two bedroom, I mean, three bedroom, two bath. We have those four, there's four on the Southwest that have the stunning views of Rib Mountain and the river. And then we've got four that are on the Northeast and you get beautiful morning sun and you face North and you've got a gorgeous view of the, of the pedestrian bridge and, and the little creek that's running there. Um, interesting, we've rented two of the ones that are facing Granite Peak and none of the ones that are facing North yet. Um, we're only 75% or 25% leased on those eight. For our two bedroom, two baths, we've got um, th three styles. Our main style, I didn't show it to you, is the Eagle River. It's sort of basic. We've got a Manaqua and a Manitouche Waters. And um, the Manaqua is, and I can't flip so easy, so I'll just wait. This Manaqua is on the south end of the building, but it has morning sun, so it's on the east corner but it has a stunning view of the river and Grand Peak and it has a really cool layout I'll show that to you in a little bit um, and three of those four are already rented and then now Manitouche Waters it doesn't have the best view of the water um, because it's sort of on the north east corner but it faces south and so you get a peak of the water but it's priced right, as you can tell. It's only 1560 in comparison to the 1710, and you're still getting the same square footage. That was sort of a mistake of mine. I didn't realize how um, high in demand they, those would be. So the only one that's available is the one on the first, first, second floor. Um, and then we have a tomahawk that is on the inside corner, face of south, no water views, and um, all three of those are rented. And then we have a Lac du Flambeau. Both of these, the Tomahawk and the Lac du Flambeau, both have a sort of a, because they're on that 45 of the building, they have a really cool little layout. They're a little bit different. And I think maybe that's why they rent it also and the price point. So we have one of those rented and two available. But what I find interesting is when you compare um, the percentages between what we've leased Our three bedroom, two bath. Okay, so we only have 25% of those leased, but our two bedrooms and two baths and our one bedroom, one and a half bath, 50-50 on both of them. 
And we've got quite a few one bedroom, one bath because that was sort of what the city was pushing us to have more of those. We're at 32% leased on those. So we have 15 more of those to go. Um, the majority of our folks that are living here, the majority of them are the empty nesters, which is good for the property because, you know, they'll, hopefully they'll be around for a long time and not do a lot of, you know, moving around from complex to complex. Um, but we do have a fair amount of folks that are in their 30s and 40s. So I think that's interesting. And not all of the one bedroom, one baths are to the younger folks. Um, we have quite a few seniors that are living in those that are like widows. Um, and that just fits in their budget nicer. So we're at 44% occupancy and that's 33. Um, we've been stuck at that for a while. If everybody who said yes in the beginning would have actually signed a lease, we'd be at probably 60%. But life changes, I think COVID had some issues, you know, also. Um, so a few of them fell off. Um, we have, she has, Sandy has three more folks that she's showing to yet this week. Um, and it hopefully will be up to 40 or 45 relatively soon. Because everybody who is on this list right here, they're fully executed leases. Um, get rid of that. Share. Um, Uh -oh. Let's show you some photos here. There we go. So this is um, the Manaqua. I, mean, I just took these just this morning. These folks um, chose not to have an island. They're going to be putting a kitchen table closer by the window. This is the Arborvita, that corner little bedroom. Is that not the most stunning little room you've seen? A lot of folks are putting their office in there. And this is also the Air Provida, looking at the kitchen cabinets, under cabinet lighting and that backsplash back there. We have a variety of color palettes. On the third and fourth floor is this color for the cabinets. Um, we have amazing gray on four, and uh, oh boy, I can't remember. It's uh, like a, a tan sort of color on the third floor for the walls. On the second floor, we have white cabinets, and on the first floor, we have root beer. And all the bathrooms are huge. I mean, so totally large enough for a couple of different people to be in there at the same time and not feel like you're. This is the fourth floor of St. Germain. Can you sort of see how those cabinets go all the way down? And then we have the um, wine bar right there. And this is the St. Germain's living room. And these folks asked Bob to put in um, their TV outlet here so they can hang their TV. And that was stepping outside on that balcony this morning. No oohs and odds. <laughs> this is that um, bedroom I told you is just stunning views. And then this is the view from the master bedroom. And this is that master bedroom's bathroom. And this is actually a lone rock. This is a one bedroom, one and a half bath on the fourth floor. And so that half bath is like right over here. And this is a view from the North Lone Rocks. And this is the second floor, St. Germain. So this is just an illustration of the different color paint and the white cabinets. I'm telling you, this place is still way under construction, as you can see. They are just busting their butts. This is our party room on the first floor. We're going to have um, a fireplace over here with a big 
TV up above with some casual seating here. There'll be swivel chairs. So you can swivel and turn and face the party if you want. We will have eight bar stools along here. And we'll have another TV over on this wall with a couple of um, soft seating chairs here. And then we'll have three high top tables that are tall enough so that you can sit and see out the windows up here. We'll have three of them right around in here. Isn't it just beautiful views? This is our main entrance. It's sort of bare. We don't have our furniture in, obviously, yet. But we'll have a couch and a couple of chairs over here and some artwork on the wall. And we'll have some fresh coffee out here every morning. And here's our mailboxes. You've got to have that. And we have a large mailbox delivery room right in here. And there will be a, um, a fob so the, all the um, delivery drivers will be able to access it and put things in there. The first floor, all but I believe one of the first floor apartments will have direct access to the outside. So this is to the right of the main entrance door. So because of they're all like ground level. So they'll have a nice patio here and um, we'll dig this out at some point and put in some shrubs so that they feel like they have a private little patio. And this unit right here is our ADA Manitouche Waters and it's, it's rented to a gal who's in a wheelchair. And Bob is going to um, somehow, I think over in this area here, fill that up and give her a ramp so she'll be able to come right outside and, and have exterior access right from our apartment. And I think that's about it. Another thing I want to show you here is um, Okay. You share. You guys can still hear me, right? We can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to go on to my. Oh, darn it. Okay. All right. I'm just going to, no, I don't want to do that. Is it following me? I'm going to the Wasser River Life. Yes. Is it following me? Okay. So did we just got this um, added to our website uh, just about a week ago. No, maybe two weeks ago. You are listing. So if you're just going onto our regular Wasa River Life website, you can click here or up here, and it takes you right to our software, which is called AppFolio. And so you can take a look here and read a little bit about it. Um, if you wanted to actually click on this one, you are inside AppFolio. There's more pictures. And you can read, you're like, yeah, I really like that. That's my favorite one so far. So you can actually click here and schedule showing. And fill this information in, and we can do a test. Okay. View available times. I oh, didn't like that. Oh, it didn't like me. There we go. All right, so here you can see um, Sandy has available times tomorrow. She's booked on Wednesday, Thursday. And so if I were to click on this and confirm appointment, it sends her an email. It sends you a text. And or and an email actually, and it confirms the appointment. And now, 
that basic information that I just entered becomes part of a guest card in that folio. And then if you go see the property and you like what you see, you can actually just go back into your tenant portal and um, enter in more information and do a um, fill out an application. You can do the supply now right here. And she's actually rented two apartments without even trying because they've been online, they saw what they liked, they clicked on apply now, and they never came to look at the property. They're from out of town and they just rented it. I'm like, okay, that was easy. <laughs> and there's a $50 application fee, but if there's two people, we share it between the two. And you answer some questions and yeah, pretty cool. I'm going to X out of that, I think. <clears throat> One out. There it is, okay. But this um, at Folio, um, it's, it, it's just so simple. When we go into our leasing, um, we have our, the guest cards. This is the very first stage. You can see there's me. That was my test. I got really excited. <laughs> so these are all the folks that have um, just inquired. And in fact, I got to tell you, Mark Craig and his girlfriend applied. And I thought, oh, wouldn't that be funny? I'd finally be his landlord for a change. <laughs> <laughs> but he he and Libby wanted a um, one of the St. Germain's. The arborvitas weren't big enough, so we have to remove them. But this software is um, it's just so powerful, and it does so much of the work for us that we're really happy to have this new software. But we were doing this and getting um, all up to date with this software. When, when was that? In, in May, we went live in June. So everything's very new. And I didn't mention this before, but um, we have a new hire, and her name is Sandy Jagler. And she joined our team back in March so that she could focus on the leasing. And she's just been doing a fabulous job. That's where she's at right now. She has a showing at noon. Do you want to see anything else? Does anyone have any questions for Coraline? Thanks. It looks it looks great. I think uh, um, you know everybody's on mute, Coraline, so it's hard to get yeah. uh, get reactions like you were asking for oohs and ahs. But yeah, I know yeah. it's been a long I know it's been a long road getting uh, getting this point for this project, but it seems like it's really coming together. Um, that's good. Does anyone have any questions for Coraline? Hey, Coraline. This is Andrew. First, thank you so much for presenting uh, River Life. Um, I, I've been on the River Walk, and I've seen the, you know, the evolution of the facility and your um, and the uh, the building there. Um, and man, I'm looking. I'm, I was actually very interested in potentially moving there at some point when my lease is up at Urban West. Um, now, I, my question is in regards to the the surrounding community and that surrounding area. Um, how do you see this revitalizing the downtown area? Do you see this um, in the next five years potentially, you know, transforming that entire area, you know, from a kind of a socioeconomic perspective, or what do you see from that? Oh, absolutely. I think we've already started to see that with WOW, and then Bricks and, uh, and the park that's there, and with the apartments, and you're going to be having 75 potentially couples you know, so that's, I mean, what, a couple hundred people that we're going to be having. They're going to be going in and out of that area, utilizing the walk and wow and the park and bricks and just the downtown. It it's def definitely is going to. It's going to be a huge impact. Thank is you, there Coraline. Any space for storage like bikes and kayaks and things like that? Yeah, good question. Um, we have in the lower level, 
Okay, yeah. See if I can get back into. Anyway, in the lower level of the garage, in front of your parking space, your parking space is nine foot wide. It's about four feet deep, and it'll have a door on it. It'll be about 10 feet tall. So that comes with your parking space. And then on the third and fourth floor, we have approximately four by six is the size. Some are a little bit larger of storage units. There's 12 on each floor, and those rent for an extra $20 a month. Other questions for Corleen? Okay, Corleen, it looks like you can you can uh, stop sharing the screen then. Sure. Okay. There we go. All right, anything else? <clears throat> Thanks very much for the presentation. That was very informative yeah, and helpful. Yeah. Um, hopefully your, uh, your rental percentage will be driven up just from this meeting. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, okay, anything else for the good of the order? Otherwise we can end a few minutes early here. Just a, just a quick question. Well, yeah. what can anyone tell me what are they doing just south of the Thomas Street Bridge across the river there? Is that I saw an article about this, Brad. I it's not a bridge, it's like a, a gas line or something like that, I oh, believe. Okay. They're installing the uh, sewer system from the from the east side of the river over where uh is that where what it is? Okay. Um, where it, uh, yeah, it nice okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Anything else for uh, for the today's meeting? Okay. Well, I warned everyone last week I was going to just pick people to to give us the four way test rather than have everybody try to say it in unison. So, um, you, you know, we'll see how this goes. But um, Kelly, you're on my first screen. How do you feel about reciting the four way test today? That works for me. All right. <laughs> Okay. Of the things we think, say, and do, is it fair? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Yeah, good all job. right. Thanks, Kelly. Great job. Have a great Appreciate week, everybody. everybody. Yep. Have a good week. Take care. We'll see you uh, next Monday. Thanks, Kelly. Bye. 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 Bye.